In this video, we're going to take a look at feature-based modeling inside of Autodesk Inventor. Here inside of this model, feature-based model.ipt, from our working files directory, we're going to examine certain concepts which are key to the software. We're going to begin by looking on the left-hand side of this particular interface, and we can see that we have our model browser. That's what this guy over here is called. And we can see a certain list of items in this tree. We'll begin by taking a look at this origin folder by expanding it. Here we can see a standard Cartesian coordinate system designed with the X, Y, the X, Z, and the Y, Z planes. We also have the X, Y, and Z axes and a absolute zero origin point. As we hover over top of them, they do highlight on the screen to let us know where they are. The use of origin planes is very crucial to any sort of intelligent design inside of 3D modeling software. These features do not change no matter what. They are very static, very stable features. You can always rely on your origin. I'm going to reduce that by hitting the minus there. And next, we can see we have a series of features, such as extrusion, face draft, fillet, shell, and others. The types of features that we see in this tree can be subjugated by two different categories. You basically have sketch-based features, such as this extrusion one, which required a sketch to help create it. And there, as I hover on top of the sketch, you can see basically how that was a couple of rectangles perhaps put together with some dimensions on them. We also have another category, which is pick and place features. Those are items like the face draft and the fillet, which do not require a sketch to be generated in order to create the feature. Now these features are not added to this tree in a random order. They are not added here alphabetically. They are added here as a timeline. So essentially, this part was initially created with this extrusion at the top, and then other features were added to it to build onto that feature throughout the design of the part. Now to better understand how this particular part was built, we're gonna do a nice little trick inside of Autodesk Inventor called rewinding the history. So if I go here to the end of part marker at the bottom of this tree, I can click and hold on it and drag it back in time higher up the history tree. And what'll happen is where I drop it, let's say right here above face draft, it takes me back in time to when that feature was created and before anything else was created after it. So this is your little time machine. So you can drag this up and down through your history tree to examine how something was developed. So here I can see this initial sketch helped create this feature, extrusion one. And then if I drag this below face draft, you can see a small draft was added to this part. And I'll drag it below fillet one. You can see the smooth edges were added to this. If you were doing those particular types of fillets in an archaic 2D drafting system, it'd be very tedious to do so. Here it's quite easy. And then we have a shell. Well, what did the shell do? I don't see anything. Well, it's because it's on the underside of the model. If I rotate this, you can see the bottom side very easily. Rotation in the software can be done in numerous different ways, just as a little tangent here. But if you're having trouble with the rotation right now, just go ahead and use this cube that's in the upper right. If you click on the home icon, this little picture of a house, that'll take you back to that standard isometric view. Next, we'll go below to extrusion two. Again, you can't see anything happen because it's actually on the underside. Here a protrusion was added to this. And then we'll go down to extrusion three. You can see a hole was added to this, a slotted hole. And then another fillet to smooth those edges there. And then we have hole one. And then a mirror operation to mirror that across our origin plane. If I expand the plus sign there and the features underneath that, you can see how that took that hole and included it in that mirror. I'm going to redact these items. So this is a look so far at feature-based modeling. Now the next thing we wanna take a look at is how these things can help us change. What happens if we destroy something in our history of this feature-based model? So if I come back up here to the shell, this shell created this wall thickness all the way around the part. After that, an extrusion was created on the inside of that wall thickness. If I were to right-click on the shell and choose delete, what do you think will happen? That's right you're going to lose that extrusion. It'll become sick or damaged. So let me choose delete here. And again, a dialog box that says, would you like to delete the dependent sketches and features? I actually have an option to keep them here. However, it's not gonna do me much good based on how these were developed. 
So here I'll allow that to be deleted and choose OK. You can see I lost a lot of my history simply by deleting the shell. Now, if I'd like to undo that, I'll go up here to my Quick Access Toolbar at the very top of the screen, and we have our undo command. I'll choose that, and I get my features back. Now, what if I deleted the shell and chose to keep those features? Here, I'll choose OK. And essentially, I kept the features, but they are sick. That's what this little icon in front of it means. It also lost my references for how that extrusion needs to be created. So instead, it created a few work features, these yellow features here, to help me still be able to create that. But there's really not a lot going on except for that slotted hole through the center. So let me rotate this back, and I'm going to undo to get my shell returned to me. This mirror operation that we did with the hole is also pretty neat because it updates based on how the original first hole changes. If I were to double click on hole one, it takes me in to modify the hole, and I can modify the dimensions for which it's placed. So right here is an 80 millimeter. I'll change this to 100 millimeter. I'll hit my return key, and it updates that hole placement and also the hole on the other side, because this hole is a child of this parent over here. So we have parent-child relationships that are in play. Much like the shell was a parent to this extrusion feature, so is the mirrored hole to this one over here. We have our parent-child relationship. Now for parametrics and feature-based modeling to work correctly, you do need to make sure you define things fully. If I take a look at extrusion two, if I expand that down, I can see sketch two in there. If I were to double click on sketch two, you can see I have some dimensions on here that define its shape. However, I have not defined its location. It is still a very loose piece of geometry. If you don't lock this down, your model could update in an unexpected manner. For instance, let's say the slot is out here, but somehow I go back to my history and I make the overall width of this part a little bit shorter. Then what's going to happen is this extruded portion here, as well as the hole that follows it, is going to be hanging out somewhere in space out here, which is obviously something we don't want. So we need to find this with a dimension. We'll go up here to the top and choose dimension, and just choose to put a simple value in here of 40, from the center point to this line. Now this line is a projected reference, this is basically saying that when this edge updates, so does this location of 40 here, also very important to our feature-based model. I'll right-click and choose OK to finish my dimension command, and then right-click again and choose Finish Two-Dimensional Sketch. So I have a little bit better location on how that extrusion is located.